the battle for control of one of Canada's largest telecommunications company coming to an end for now. This is not resolved. And so, yes, the... This happened now, and I'm sure that there will be a lot more changes coming. Edward was chair of the board up until last month when the feud began after reports emerged that Edward, son of the late Ted Rogers, wanted to remove CEO Joe Natale and change the corporate leadership. His plan was interrupted by other members of the board, including Edward Rogers' sister and mother. Edward went on to remove and replace five directors without a meeting of shareholders. Under BC Corporation Act um, resolutions, Written resolutions can be used to uh, resolve situations like this where the shareholder, uh, majority of shareholders signed a resolution to support the changes. A family owned trust controls 97.5% of voting shares in Rogers Communications. Edward Rogers has said that as chair of the family trust, he controls the votes and can choose the directors on his own, an argument which members of his family disputes. Justice Fitzpatrick's decision validates the changes made by Edward. It stabilizes things for a while. You know, whether you like the decision or you don't, at least we know who the legitimate board is. There will be some changes. We know that's coming. And you know, Edward's been quite uh, frank about the fact that he did not believe that Joe Natale was doing a good job. That's really not up for debate anymore. He makes the decisions. Fitzpatrick did not share reasons for siding with Edward Rogers and said her decision was effective immediately. A lawyer representing the Rogers family had argued the independent decision went against the company's governance practices and the wishes of the late Ted Rogers. Martha Rogers, Edward's sister and board member, put out a statement on Twitter expressing her disappointment, saying in part, while the appeal process unfolds, we plan to remain steadfast in our advocacy for good governance and responsible stewardship at Rogers on behalf of our employees, customers and all shareholders. What's unique about this is families have squabbles all the time. Right. Family-owned businesses would have issues, you know, that come up from time to time, but it's usually dealt with behind closed doors. The fact that this was in the public domain and remained in the public domain throughout the last couple of weeks, it was fascinating to see and really gave an insight for the normal person into one of Canada's most, most powerful families.